All right, light the beam. It's all over in Sacramento, 109 to 95. The Kings get the W. And now it's on to a tough four-game road trip. But first things first, they had to win tonight, and they did, setting up a pivotal four-game road trip. In a moment, Ryan and Sacktown, the post game right here on If You Don't Like That. Two, one, go. Sacramento missed you. Carter, stolen by Williams. And look at this. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like NBA basketball. an ESPN highlight right there. Whoa. Carlson comes in. How about this? Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. That was a major league smudge. All right. Ryan and Sacktown does indeed join us. And uh, really a nice second half, as we told you, from uh, Fox uh, and Sabonis. They got good performances from the bench in the first half, particularly Mitchell in the second half from Trey Lyles. What a difference having Trey Lyles back. You know, it's only been two games, but you can see how much he's meant to this team. They really it, missed him. It, it, Grant, it's changed a lot. Let's see if he can keep it up, but I got to ask you, is Trey ahead of schedule for you? Yes. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yep. It, it, it seems like he just dropped right back into the middle of the season was fine. So it gives them an added boost, but it wasn't only on offense tonight, defense tonight, the Kings forced nine turnovers and Davion was a big reason for that nine turnovers between Harden and Westbrook. Huge. Again, you had a perfect setup for this game. Clippers had been on the East coast all week. They were in Charlotte 48 hours ago, long flight. No Kawhi Leonard. Perfect. Perfect yeah. setup. Now, conversely, you got to do it now. You got to get on the airplane tomorrow, fly all the way to New York, and take on a Knicks team who lost tonight and did not play well. And Jalen Brunson, the reigning player of the month for March, had his worst game in a long time. He very rarely has two bad games. And we saw what happened the last time. They faced Jalen Brunson in the Knicks a short, what, two weeks ago. Brunson yeah, killed them. So that's going to be one hell of a tough game. It is going to be a tough game. And you look at the Knicks schedule, Grant. They've got the Kings and then Chicago. So this kind of looks like they're get right. So the Kings better be ready to play. But if they bring this type of team mindset, I think we're in for another big-time fight in the Apple. All right. Again, 109-95, uh, the final tonight. And uh, the Kings – you know, they don't shoot the ball particularly well, uh, 42% or three, uh, but they, they play good enough defense. And I, again, I, I said this at halftime. I told you that I thought the Clippers would wilt in the second half from attrition. And I saw that. I thought that's exactly what happened. And I'm I'm not taking any of the way from the Kings because I thought the Kings defense was very good. But I thought the, the Clippers just looked tired tonight. You called it, Grant. You were all over that at halftime, and credit to the Kings for capitalizing on that. And speaking about the Kings' defense, I think it was more than that. I'm not going to give the stats on all these, but Grant, these are the areas where the Kings won the game. Steals, bench points, point in the yep. points in the paint, fast break in transition, both offensively, defensively, turnovers, points off of turnovers, blocks. You want me to go on? That's a winning formula when you perform that way against a good Western Conference team. And the Kings win and the Mavs lose. I still don't think the Kings are catching Dallas. I think that no. the more likely scenario uh, would be New Orleans. And then you got to be careful of Phoenix because, you know, they, they beat New Orleans last night. They play them again. Here's the deal. You got to get through this road trip breathing and staying afloat. And then it's right there. I mean, I, I don't have to do the math any more than anyone else. You've got to win your next two games against New Orleans and Phoenix because they count as two in the standings. Yeah, um, maybe this team has learned a little something from those Dallas losses. Maybe the maybe. pressure was let out a little bit um, of this cooker we call Sacramento. And uh, maybe it's just play basketball, have fun. And if they play like this, Grant, I don't think we're going to be worried about them even making the play. And they're going to have a chance at that. We'll see. You know, they're going to definitely be in a play. And the question yeah. is, you know, will they will they win the play? And the Lakers won tonight as well, uh, but they're not going to catch Sacramento. So, you know, the Kings are either going to finish sixth, seventh, or eighth. I mean, that's where we're going to be. They're they're going to be. They're not going to be five. They're either going to be six, 
seven or eight, we all know what the difference between six is from seven and eight. I mean, it's it's gigantic. And yeah, you know, if you're if you're seven or eight, you know, here's a scenario we haven't even talked about yet. Okay. The last thing I want to see in a one game seven eight is Sacramento and New Orleans, especially if Brandon Ingram is back. Okay, because yes. the Pelicans have owned Sacramento. And we haven't even talked about that scenario. That is a possibility where you could have Sacramento playing New Orleans in the play-in. That's not something I want to see if I'm Sacramento. Definitely not. We know the troubles in this version of the Kings because you just don't have the length. And what do you think of, Grant, when you think about New Orleans? Length. Uh, yeah, think of their front line killed the Kings' front line. And uh, yep. Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, they couldn't handle – and that was even one game I think was Zion didn't even play, and they still beat up on them. Uh, I don't know whether Ingram's going to be back or not for that. Um, he he should be, but again, I can't. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not with the, the Pelicans, but he should be. And uh, but that that would be a little bit of a, a scary thing. All right, so you got a good performance from the bench tonight. You got absolutely uh, nothing in the first half from Barnes. Woke up a little bit in the second half. And, you know, Keon Ellis does what he does. But he's, again, he's not an offensive player. So uh, you, you, I, I just ask you, now you have to have Lyles playing this way. Because when you have Barnes and Ellis ineffective offensively, you've got to make up that somewhere. And tonight you got it from two guys on the bench. Lyles. And Mitchell. And you got a little bit more than you'll normally expect. This uh, reincarnation of the Kings, you can't have two starters with the numbers that Harrison had tonight and Keon had. Now, granted, Keon was in foul trouble, and I was not so worried about his offense. I was more worried about the defense because he was yep. playing elite guards. And when you get to the playoffs, you know they're going to hone in. And Grant, you've said since Keon came into the scene, Wait till they get a hold of some more tape. Yeah. Well, he played 22 minutes tonight and did foul out. And, you know, going up against the Knicks, uh, we know that's going to be a physical game. And it's going to be mm -hmm. very interesting to see how the officials call that game. Because the last time the Kings played the Knicks two weeks ago, the fans were all complaining after the game about the lack of whistles. And I would think that in a game like that, a lack of whistles favors the Knicks. Certainly. Certainly the Kings aren't a good free throw shooter or th shooting team. So, but I know that doesn't play into it, but yeah, the Knicks are so much more to me. Their raw talent is much better than the Kings raw talent as a group. All right. I want to tell you about uh, Bennett's and their three locations, Sacramento, Roseville, and the West side grill in Rockland prime seafood and steak at Bennett's West side grill. They have uh, tremendous happy hour specials on apps and drinks, 60 different types of wine available by the glass. Don't forget about your weekend brunch as well at Bennett's. That's Bennett's Restaurants at Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Again, three locations, Sacramento, Roseville, and the West Side Grill in Rockland. You will love what you get at Bennett's Prime Seafood and Steaks. Kings win it 109-95. to So happy that you're with us right here on the post game. We will look forward to your phone calls, uh, your chat messages. Keep them going. And uh, we will get to you. Promise. Yeah. All right. All right. So here we go. What do you think about this? Coach always keeps the starters in long, but uh, rather make sure they win than a run by the Clippers and the starters are cold. Well, first of all, I agree with you. I think he does leave the starters in too long. I've said that uh, all year. I said that last year. And I think he's gotten very lucky that when his starters are in the game, when they don't need to be, no one's been injured. So I, I agree with you. I think they do keep the starters in too long. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it in a game like this with the Clippers who can make up a lot of points quickly. Um, but I don't like it throughout the season, as you said. Well, appreciate the uh, folks going to Bennett's last Friday at Bennett's. We tried the ribs and fried trick, uh, fried chicken and the French <laughs> dip. Absolutely huge portions. I am very happy that you enjoyed that. We uh, love the fact that uh, people are heading out to Bennett's. Tell them that uh, you're big fans of the show as well uh, when you go up there. All right. So 109 to 95, uh, the Kings get the victory and they pick up a game on the Mavericks who lost tonight in Golden State against the Warriors. The Huge. Red Hot Mavericks finally lost the game. 
Well, they kind of they got the short end of the stick. That was the makeup game for when Golden State's coach passed away, and the Mavericks flew all the way home to play Houston, all yep. the way back to the West Coast. So yep. that makes it it's um, a tough one. Yep, pretty hey, darn you know what? tough. That, that that's very interesting that you pointed that out because there are games that you circle that are schedule games. You said it. I last look at week. that as a schedule game. Yeah, and you said that about the first Dallas game last week, Grant. You were yes. absolutely all over that. Hey, we're going to get to Zach in just one second, but I was laughing about the Bennett's chicken and ribs because uh, we've got a great story about the chicken and ribs. <laughs> yeah. We do. <laughs> Most of it ended up on uh, Grant's phone screen. <laughs> but anyways, NBA guru Zach, welcome in. Kings win. What a good win, guys. Uh, this was a great win. We said... This would be a great win if the Clippers won. I mean, if the Kings won. And uh, I love seeing it. I mean, I got through a lot of points through this game. Um, the rebounding was great. Everyone was rebounding the ball. Sabonis had 20 or uh, something like that. Um, Trey Lyles was getting all these offensive rebounds. L Len was 20. getting all these. Yeah. 20 for the team. 20. That, that's crazy. Uh, a lot of uh, great offensive rebound. Just a lot of hustle. I just saw the intensity, the tenacity on defense. They were playing great on that end. Um, and we got to give a lot of props to the bench. Uh, Trey Lyles was shooting. It was just all over the place, playing good D. Um, and Davion was making his threes. He was aggressive on the ball, uh, pushing the ball. And the thing that I liked about the team is that, you know, we were doing a lot of crisp passing. Just I just thought we were very in sync today. Uh, just always passing the ball when we get an offensive rebound. The ball's just coming out really quick, trying to get a three-point shot. Um, that was great. I mean, the bench was – got to give a lot of props to the bench. We're, we've been scared with the bench this whole, uh, you know, without Monk era. And what – we got a bunch from Trey, Davion, and Len was playing good minutes in his plus-minus. Um, so that's great. I think Grant Brand brought up that, you know, the Clippers look tired. Um, they do, but I mean, that's what you get when you have an older team. Like the two best players, uh, today were what 34. I mean, their three best, I guess you count Russell Westbrook are all what 35, 34, 35. Yeah. Uh, it's going to happen near the end of the season. So that's, that's the risk they're going to take if they want all their players being their stars. Um, so we, and, and, and one big thing without the, the, the Kings, uh, kind of had a dis not a disadvantage, but Fox, we thought this guy would need 30 and eight every game to keep us in the games and just do work. Uh, he did not play that well today. What six for no. 20, uh, seven assists. I, I kind of need a little bit more playmaking, but he well, makes he, no turnovers though. Yeah, yeah. His, his assist turnover was great. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, um, make his, made his free throw today. So, but in that fourth quarter, I was, we were hoping that Fox would kind of light it up a little bit, but he was missing his middies uh, a little bit. And, um, uh, they were trying to get his bonus in there. He kind of missed some bunnies in, at the end, but, um, overall great game. Uh, Keegan Murray played great too. He was aggressive. Uh, I wish I think he needs to work on his passing uh, in the offseason, but um, I love that pass to Sabonis. Even Sabonis is like, What are you serious? So that, that was awesome to see. It's a great play. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, these next three games on the road trip, um, I mean, I'm thinking we got to get one for sure. Uh, two, I feel two is going to be tough to get in the next three. Well, if you get two, Brooklyn's got to be an automatic win, and yep. then you can get one of the three. I think, to me, it's all sets up with the Knicks game. I think if you beat the Knicks, you'll you'll go at least two and two, and if you lose to the Knicks, you're going to go one and three. Yeah. You know who the key is going to be there? Dante uh, DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo. 31 yeah. tonight. He He's playing good for them in a little bit of yeah. a different role with Randall out. You know, think, and uh, Onanobi. Good you know, he's out. Oh yeah, I think that I think Divincenzo has, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I checked this a few weeks ago, but he still should be like the third leading uh, three point shooter in the league uh, as far as three pointers made. You know, just just yeah. understand that in the recent meeting two weeks ago, Brunson killed Fox. Okay, he was clearly the best player on the floor. That can't happen on Thursday night. Fox has got to hold his own on Thursday night. Grant, Grant and Zach, it's not that type. I don't think it's Brunson specifically. It's that type of guard De'Aaron Fox has trouble with. Any type of guard that's got a little bit of a lower center of gravity and a little bit of strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and, and Brunson, Brunson really struggled tonight. It was one of his worst games uh, that he's had in a long time. He won't have another bad game. So he, he, you'll, you're going to be seeing the A version of Brunson on Thursday night. They're going to be putting uh, Davion or Keon on them, right? 
They can put on whoever they want. They had they had those guys on uh, Brunson last time, and it didn't help. But they were switching. Yeah, it, yeah, both sides were. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, Brun definitely Fox has to probably have it against the Knicks a thirty and eight type of game uh, to get yep. that W. Um, so hopefully we can make it happen. Uh, it's a good win, and um, I just think that if the Kings keep playing like this, the tenacity, the aggressiveness on D, the crisp passing, just being in sync. A lot of their uh, offense was coming from transition too, so uh, we got to give them a lot of props. And um, I mean, I'm just I'm just liking the fight that they've given these first two games uh, out of the without Monk. Yeah, they played well, no question about that. They played well, and now the real challenge comes. Uh, let's face it, I'm not taking anything away from Sacramento, but they had the table set perfectly tonight. You could not have asked for a better scenario than tonight. You know, it's announced that, you know, you, Kawhi Leonard's not playing and you got the Clippers who were just on the East Coast for three games who were in Charlotte 48 hours ago. You could tell they were they were not themselves. They were tired and they were without their best player and the Kings took advantage of it. And that you you want breaks at this time of the year. Just like Ryan pointed out, the Warriors got a big break tonight. You know, that's a that's a brutal situation in a makeup game for the Mavericks to do that. That's brutal. So, you know, the Warriors are going, okay, we got a break here. You know, you look for breaks at this time of the year, but you got to capitalize on them. No doubt. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and for that person that, um, yeah, every team's going to have uh, breaks and some and sometimes they're not. And that one guy that said the coach is putting in the starters too long, um, right now you got to kind of do it. <laughs> you don't, yeah, I agree. So, um, you, yeah, anyway. I'm but I appreciate Appreciate it, guys, and uh, let's keep playing like this. Hey, thank you very much, man. Thanks, you take Zach. care. And uh, I want to tell you about Fosters and Paws, a group of animal advocates. They are very passionate of uh, what they do, and uh, there are puppies available for adoption right now. So puppies. if you go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt, that's fostersandpaws.org slash adopt, and ask about their available puppies. They also, uh, you know, they work primarily with dogs in shelters, and they do, again, so many great things, and with families, and teaching the young people the lifelong benefits of having a pet. Uh, they're awesome. That's fostersandpaws.org slash adopt and uh, get in touch with them and adopt yourself a uh, puppy. Kings beat the Clips tonight, and now it's on to a brutal four-game trip. This is brutal in many ways. It's brutal because of the teams you're playing, but it's also brutal because you come back and the, the league only gives you one day off yeah. before you have to play New Orleans. And then guess what happens the very next night? You have to play Phoenix. So yep. what do we talk about that last Dallas game, the uh, the first Dallas game? Jeez. It was three games in four nights, okay? Now you're going to be playing a Oklahoma City team wrapping up a four-game trip. Yep. Long flight, believe it or not, this time of the year, it's about 3.15, 3.30. One day off, a gigantic game. Gigantic. Huge. Could be the biggest game of the year. And then the next yep. night, while the Suns are waiting for you, you play them. That's brutal. It, it is brutal. And it, it's kind of on us for not pointing out that back to back is just as important as that two game series with Dallas because both of those teams are just as much as in contention. But hey, the yep. Kings have been put in tough situations before this season. I'm confident they can probably get out of it. Let's uh, bring Randall in on the conversation. Welcome in, Randall. Well, how are you guys doing? Speak up, please. Speak up. Randall? We're going to put Randall back in the audience. Hey, Randall, you were just a little bit low. We couldn't really hear you. Turn the background down and turn the volume up on yourself. So, you know, again, you're you're looking at a road trip that, to me, the very first game is going to set up this whole road trip. Mm -hmm. Because if you lose against the Knicks, let's just say it. You're, 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 the Celtics are 32-3 and three at home, okay? Right. And unless they have a lot of guys that aren't playing, you got to be realistic. Sacramento's not going to beat the Celtics, okay? No. So then you have two games left. You must absolutely beat Brooklyn, who... It's not chopped liver, but they're, you know, they're 29 and 47. They've lost seven of 10. Okay. So let's just assume, which we I'm doing it for sake of conversation, Rhino. We yeah. assume that the Kings are going to be Brooklyn. So if you beat the Knicks, then you're looking at the worst of two and two road trip. And right now, if you told me the Kings would go two and two on this trip, I would take it. Run, 
Run with it. Absolutely run with it. Yeah. Um, If they can pull that off, you you lay it out perfectly. But Grant, everything's been about physicality, right? When the Kings play physical, they're usually in a game. Look at the rest of the schedule. Let's just do it. New York, Boston, as we talked about, Brooklyn, Oklahoma City, New Orleans, Phoenix, Portland. I think there's only at most two games where the Kings are probably the more physical team. Again, it's uh, each game is almost like a playoff game it right is. now. Yeah, and you just Great have to point. approach it that way. You just have to approach it that way. You know, here here's the positive about what's coming up. The Kings have played very well on the road for two years now. Yeah, so that they're have. they're not going to be, you know, no, I don't think like oh wow we're at New York or we're at no they're they're they're, they're, they're through all of that. They and I will just tell you, Fox loves playing at Madison you Square Garden. That. Yeah, and he loves you, playing at the Garden, and I I got to believe that. Uh, he's going to play very well. I think the game on Thursday is going to be one hell of a game. You know, the Knicks are coming off a loss. Not only a loss, it's their third straight loss. This is a huge game for the Knicks. The The, the Garden is going to be jumping, all right? It's going to be jumping. It's going to be electric. And the Knicks are going to come out with a lot of energy and a lot of defensive intensity. And the Kings need to be ready to withstand that. Yeah, I don't know if the Kings can't. So that's a good question. Can they? They withstood the Clippers tonight, giving them a couple of runs, right? But the Clippers weren't really that physical. Can the Kings withstand a run against the Knicks and then be able to still come back? I don't know if they have that firepower. And for whatever reason, New York, it seems like it's a problem for them. Whenever they play that early game, 4 o'clock, yep. Yep. It, it's just Especially, never. Yeah, and you're not going to be acclimated to the time no. difference yet. You know, so, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not trying to make excuses before the game starts. I'm just trying to let every we know how good the Knicks are. The Knicks just went in and beat, you know, Sacramento two weeks ago. All right. Uh, but they don't have the same roster. They got a couple of guys that are out of the run. We'll see. You know, it, it's it's all about Jalen Brunson. Like Jalen Brunson did not yeah. play well tonight. And the Knicks lost when Jalen Brunson is Jalen Brunson. The Knicks are normally in all these games. They almost beat Oklahoma City the other night and they got screwed on a bad call yeah, bad before goal. they had to go play Miami. So that should tell you something. Yeah, uh, they're a good team. It's just on a lull. And so the Kings need to, they can't go in there sleepy. Let's just say that. And I don't think, I don't think Coach Brown has this group sleepy. They seem pretty no. actually relaxed to me, Grant. As yeah. funny as that Gabe sounds. says uh, Clippers look pathetic. Uh, hard game to judge. We're at the point of who wants it more. Listen, I don't think the Clippers look pathetic. I think this is one of their schedule games. This is a brutal schedule to be on the East Coast for three games and then have one day off and play Sacramento without Kawhi Leonard. I mean, it is what it is. Every team faces this. We've already gone over it, okay? Every team faces it. I would still think the Clippers would beat Sacramento in a series 4-2 to two with a healthy team. I don't think the Kings would beat the Clippers more than two games. I think it would be a six game series uh, or less uh, if the Clippers were healthy. Mm. Yeah. I don't disagree with that with the current state of the Kings, but yeah, look at the best games. The Kings have played with the Clippers in the last two seasons and look at how many points the Clippers have scored. Their score tonight, 95 says attrition all over it. Yeah. Let's get to uh, Andy. Andy, go ahead. You're on with Grant and Rhino. Hey, what's up, you guys? Can you guys what's hear me? What's up? Yep, how are you? you? Nice. Uh, first off, I just want to say thanks to both of you guys. I'm a lifelong Kings fan, and I feel like you guys don't get enough credit for what you guys do. I mean, thank you. Thank I you. know uh, sometimes we complain about our players and that they don't show up to work on some of these bad losses, but you guys always show up to work. You know, good game, bad game, and I just want to say I appreciate it first off. Well, thank you. We're thank doing you. it for people like you and all the great fans of this franchise, not only in Northern California, but around the world. So we uh, greatly appreciate your support. Thank you. And um, I wanted to ask both of you guys, what do you guys think of De'Aaron Fox? I want to say the last six to eight weeks. I just feel like I don't want to be prisoner of the moment, but I don't know if he's still battling through injuries. Maybe it's just that time in the season where you know, it's getting tough because they played so many games. But I feel like every single game I watch, it's six for 20, five for 18. It's very inefficient. And I feel like the shots he would make last year are not falling for him this year. And I'm wondering if you guys think he's just in a slump or if he might be dealing with some type of injury or something like that. I think it's been the story of the whole season with him. 
I, I just think that the De'Aaron Fox that we saw last year was a better version. And I keep on waiting for him to be that guy that we saw particularly in the playoffs against the Warriors. And I've only seen that in flashes where they're – and I haven't seen it with consistency. So I am concerned. Uh, could it be an injury? It could be, but he's not on the injury report. Uh, could it be something else? It could be. I, I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but I would agree with you. So we haven't gotten, I've said this many times, clear reporting on anything that may be disconnect or a muck between the Kings and De'Aaron Fox. But here's what I know based off of what I have seen, not with the team, but from afar in following this team. This is what my gut tells me. My gut tells me that De'Aaron Fox possibly does not agree with maybe some of the things he is being asked to do and or sacrifice to take the team to the next level, like playing off of the ball, probably not his favorite thing to do. And there's, to me, this game of cat and mouse between him and Mike Brown all year, whether it be in the media or whether it be directly, you know, Mike Brown makes it a very big point to say, if you have two on you, spray the ball. Well, does that apply to the reigning clutch player of the year? Uh, that, that's why I'm just kind of, that's my take on it. We'll see after the season comes out, but I know. It's a, a good question, Andy. Great question. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm sure there's some other callers, so I don't want to keep you guys too long. But again, I appreciate you guys uh, letting me on, and uh, I'm glad we got the W tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you, Andy. Pre okay. Appreciate you joining us, all right? And uh, call again. We do appreciate that. I think you bring up a good point. Ryan, I mean, we don't have any uh, clear-cut facts no. uh, to back that up. We're speculating, but I, yes. I, I agree with you. I, I think that uh, there's a lot of truth to that. I really do. I think there is something going on there. New Works Plumbing for your plumbing needs and repairs. They've got a fix for you. Go to sacserviceplumbing.com or call the number on your screen. And remember, they're available around the clock 24-7 for all of your plumbing needs. That's sacserviceplumbing.com or the number on your screen. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fix for you. Napes, what do you say we give Randall another? You think Randall's got it figured out? I think he's got it figured out. What do you think? No. What? No. You don't think Randall's got it figured out? No, that's oh. not Randall. You'll see in a second. Go ahead, Rick. Put him on, and then I'll take him right off. Ah, no, Randall. No, Bucky. that's not. that. That's Teddy. That's who that is. Hey, ah. Bucky. <laughs> oh, troll. Teddy troll. <laughs> What's up, my brother? That's Teddy the moron. What's up there? This is, yeah, that's, this that's, is the Teddy. This is Teddy. Teddy. Yeah, oh, that, hey, Teddy's Teddy. got, that, that Teddy's got a, a, a bigger brain in it than uh, than than the real Teddy. All right, what can we do here? <laughs> hey, guys. How okay. are you, buddy? I'm fine. How, how would I be in 7 a.m.? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I see the light behind you. The sun's coming up in beautiful Belgrade, Serbia. Yeah, I know you're good. Absolutely. Can smell Definitely. the burgers cooking. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this time, no burgers. Only, right. Vladi, only when wind, I was only when, I, when I was when I saw. Wait a minute. When I saw Vladi in August uh, in uh, Montenegro, he took me out for a vintage Serbian breakfast, and it was actually very good. And I can't remember what the hell it was, but it was really good. He's like, "Oh yeah, cool. everybody eats this here in Serbia for breakfast," and I'm like, "Okay, you know, I'll try it. It was good." Great. It was cereal. So no, it wasn't cereal. It was, I'm uh, joking. No, but you know what? It was. It was. Uh, I don't know. You could. Help. I'll ask Vladi, and I'll pass it along to you. Yeah. So what's going on, Baki? Well, nothing new. We win great games against great teams. <laughs> Hello, yeah. you guys. Oh, hey. Hello. Holy moly, Jim Baboli. Holy moly, Jim Baboli. Uh, well, have a great you... day at school. Huh? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what do you say about, uh, I mean, Grant Rhino, do you see some improvements in last maybe 10, 15 days about the play, about the game? I mean, I see, I see something very different. Uh, you see Keegan Murray's finally uh, figuring out how to enter hard into the paint and uh, it's pay off. Also, uh, Mike Brown did the great thing 
finally uh, putting Len more minutes. So what do you say about, uh, about uh, you know, old school basketball with the size, with the centers, with everything. So uh, I think also it pays, it pays off because uh they they think about what to do with the when the when len is in the in the game so uh, okay well let me ask I'll, let me let, let me ask let me answer the question this way you said yeah. 10 games right the last 10 maybe, games maybe there's never three, there's there's six and four in their last 10 games yeah one but, of the games uh, I, one of the games i throw out the window because I think it was just a completely ridiculous schedule game. You can't throw that out the window. Jerry Reynolds even said it. I don't Every really care. I'm throwing it game. out the window. I'm, I'm throwing what? it out the window. I'm sorry. Which, which I don't one? give a damn what which you one? are. I don't care what Jerry Reynolds says. The game against Dallas, the first game, I'm throwing out the window. Okay? There are, there are four, five games every year that I throw out the window, whether they win or lose, that are schedule games. That All was right. the schedule game. I, I'm right. not I'm, – I'm, 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 uh, uh, it's not in my mind. Hey, you've been doing this a long time. Fair enough. Well, I'm just saying, Jerry's been doing it a long time, too, and we disagree. It's fine to disagree. I'm telling you, Grant Napier is not including the first Dallas game because I think it was a completely unfair scheduling game. So I'm uh, just like you mentioned tonight, and you did it, you were spot on. The Mavs game tonight in San Francisco is one of those games that it's unfair. It's a brutal, brutal oh. Situation to fly three hours to play a makeup game based on the fact that they were just in Houston and now have to go back to Dallas. You're spot on. Um, there are games like that, and it's part of the NBA schedule. And you just, you know what? You take it for what it is. I think the Kings and Ryan's been pointing this out before I have. Okay. He thinks the Kings' style of, of play, the way they're playing now, is better because it's more conducive to winning when you aren't shooting the ball well. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Ryan. Yeah, but no, what have we said, said well. coming – what do we say almost every time, Baki and Ryan? When the Kings don't make the threes, they don't win. Well, they, they didn't win. shoot the ball well from three tonight, and they won. Why? Because they finally are playing defense. Would you agree with that, Ryan? That's what you've been saying for weeks now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're able to do more defensively. They beat the Clippers to the Clippers spots tonight, and that's what really helped them out. I – I saw tonight a big adjustments uh, for this game. So Clippers didn't have a chance. If you ask me, uh, it's a great tactical things uh, from the from the stuff. If you ask me. So Mike Brown is tonight is the winner. What what did he do specifically, Baki? Cuz I'm just curious. Well, I had a couple of things written down that I had questions about. Okay. I I already mentioned putting Len more minutes uh, uh consecutive yeah. minutes. So uh, he 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 made uh, so many difficulty uh, into the Clippers game. So Clippers offense was thinking about what to do in the paint. So if you if you take the statistics, if you if you have statistics, take a look into the Clippers uh, points into the paint. They are yeah, awful it, it, in the first two 40... quarters. Yeah, the Kings won it forty six to forty. I don't have the first two quarters in front of me, but you're correct. They had a big advantage the king yeah but but we we crushed the game in first half so you if you if you take you can you can go later take take a look into the into the pain points into the first half and you will get it where the where the where we won the game so for me this is the first time i i say it uh in in those well Baki, how many 70 so games that mike bryan did this something great tonight for sure. I, I will tell both of you, Grant, and I'll let you guys respond. This is where I think the game was won. It was in the second quarter. The Kings go defensively. This is how the Kings go. They go stop, 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 give up a three, stop, 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 stop. Same span. The Kings go three, 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 free throws, three, two, two. So it's like they get that one run where they're going to have like a two or three minute opportunity to kind of get their teeth in. And they did snap. You know what? And that's a great observation because you don't always win the game in the final few minutes of a fourth. Sometimes you win the game in the first quarter or the second quarter. We pointed that out, you know, many times that, that that's been the case many times. I mean, that's how they won last uh, game against well, Utah. Yeah, and it was and and the Dallas game where the Kings got seven of eight stops and only yes. made one basket. Yes, right, absolutely. They stopped Dallas on seven of eight Spot possessions on. earlier in the game, 
and they only scored one basket. And you could point to that stretch and go, that's where the Kings really should have widened the lead. And uh, uh, two more things. What, uh, what do you say? Uh, remember last time I, I told you that Golden State is gonna is gonna put uh, very life very difficult for the Dallas. So they now are losing the tiebreak, right? For, uh, no, in, you, have, uh, you have to understand something. When we we need to point this out. A lot of people have the wrong information. The first tiebreaker is head to head. It's two to two. Okay. If Dallas yeah. if Dallas wins their division. Regardless of the fact that they're not in Sacramento's ah, yes, division, yes. that would be the second. Okay, and right now they're yes. tied with New Orleans. So if the Mavericks win yes. the division, that would be the second tiebreaker. If then after if if that doesn't play, then it's your conference record. Conference. Okay. Yeah. I and then saw. If that, I saw the if that, if, hey, Wait a minute. If that's the same, yeah. then it goes your record among the uh, the the what was it the, the playoff teams your your combined record against the winning team. So, you know, there it normally never goes to that, but understand yeah, if the Mavericks not. if the Mavericks win their division, that would be the second tiebreaker even though, you know, the Kings aren't in that yeah, division. And, that would be the second uh, tiebreaker. And then the third is how do you like conference winning percentage in your conference? Yeah, and how do you like uh uh just for info, how do you like uh, uh our tiebreaker against all those top 10 teams because i think we we have it uh, against almost everybody it doesn't no, no, no. matter no 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 the only okay, it doesn't matter but i i just want to i just want to say again if you remember i just want to remind you that we we talked about it a long time ago that we are playing great basketball against those teams so maybe kings like those situations when sure. when the backs are uh, against the wall so, yeah, but it you know matters what? there, gonna, but the tiebreaker doesn't right. come into play. Sorry, Grant, go ahead. But he knows that. No, he, he said that. But, you know, <laughs> you also have to look at Baki. For instance, a lot of people go, gee, the Kings were really good this year against Denver. They beat them three out of four times. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. The, 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 the Nuggets were only healthy for one game, and that's the game that they beat Sacramento handily. Two of the games are without Jamal Murray. One of the games was uh, Murray and Gordon. I mean, so you, you got to be careful when you make those blanket statements about, well, gee, the Kings won the tiebreaker. Okay, you know what? If, if the Kings played New Orleans without Brandon Ingram, that's not the same team. You know, like New Orleans, there are a lot of variables that factor into this. Like we could say, gee, you know what? The Kings lost to Houston three times this year. Yeah, they did. They were 0-3. But guess what? Two of those games were without De'Aaron Fox. That makes a big difference. So there's always, you got to really analyze all of these things. No, of course, yeah, you're right, 100%. But I only I, I only want to make a point that uh, our basketball, you, you can, you can, watch the the greatness of our basketball uh, only uh, when you when you see the games against those great teams because we blew it against those awful teams so what what would have what would have happened if we won only three four games against those awful teams where where would we be we would be battling for the number two three maybe i don't maybe. know maybe But you know what? Uh, it is what it is. I mean, to me, there's only one great team in the NBA this year, and the Kings are going to see them on Friday night, and that's the Celtics. And yep. the Celtics came into yep. Sacramento without uh, their best player, and they embarrassed Sacramento. They're different. They embarrassed yeah. them. Okay? The, to me, this year, I'm not going by last year. I'm going this year there's only one great team. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to win the championship, but I think we could just sit here and say they're going to be the clear-cut favorites. Right, guys? I mean – If yeah, they, exactly. If they're going to be the they're going to be right. the clear cut favorites to win the championship they, this year. But other than that, there are what five, six, seven teams that so could so many win it, right? So it's if the Kings yeah. had their team last year, this year it'd be wide open. It, yeah, there'd be a I lot agree. more excitement. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be fun. I mean, hell, the Kings could possibly be one of those teams. We'll see. Bob. It could be. I, I, I mean, I would be yeah, shocked if they were. Yeah, team. I agree. Yeah. But but I mean, they could be. Listen, here's the deal. You can't be one of those teams if you don't get into the playoffs. And yeah. the first thing the Kings need to do is make the playoffs. And this road trip is going to go a long way in determining where they're going to be, whether they're going to be six, seven or eight. That, that this is this road trip is a defining. It's a season regular season defining road trip. This road trip that starts Thursday night in New York. Yes, it is. Hey, Baki, so, I need 
Bucky, I need one more holy moly Jim Bob bully from your daughter. Holy moly Jim Bob bully. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> love it. Great, love it. guys. Hey, you all have a great day, okay? School. <laughs> sorry, care, sorry. Can you, can you repeat? Can you repeat? I was just have saying. Have a great day. Have a great day. Oh, thank you, Grant. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Rhino. I will sleep, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, That's great. Bye. Whether, See ya. Whether bye, bye. you guys, Joking. whether oh. she likes it or not. Yes. Yeah. Nate, great whether <laughs> whether she likes it or not. She's going to be up with us while this show's still on. Cause... Holy Jim Bob Bowley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got I the Holy it. Bowley Jim Bob Bowley drop. Oh, now. I love it. Absolutely awesome. Hey, I want to tell you about Blazona Development. Uh, if you go to Calusa sunrise.com and uh, check out sunrise landing and uh, their various model six to choose from various lot sizes no melaroos no homeowners uh, great access to the major arteries like i5 and highway 20 again that is calusa yes beautiful place sunrise yeah. landing just go to calusa sunrise.com and check it out for yourself that's calusa sunrise.com and sunrise landing from Blazona Development. Yeah, that's great. You know, she rivals Jerry Rhino with that holy moly Jim Bob Holy. I got to say, she's right up there, you know? It, 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 here, give me, um, give me like a, give me a call really quick. Like, uh, oh, put them in the book and send okay. them to the line. All right, you ready? Ah, uh, put it in the books and send them to the line. Oh, boy. Holy moly Jim Bob Bowley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think it works. I, I, I think you know, you guys might have a little chemistry. I like that. That's I good. Like it. I, yeah, I got so my, I got my. Hey, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, my buddy Ryan with his new sophisticated equipment. See what he can do <laughs> on the fly. That's big time. I love it. It's fun. It's our equipment, and we have a fun time here. On if you don't like that, so. the technological wizard. Mr. Ryan in Sacktown. Well, right Mr. Napier, I think we know that's a heavy assist to one haunted horse, which we still don't know what a haunted horse is, but no. Chris and Hedstrom Bacon, you guys. But we do know this. The guy knows what the hell he's talking about when yes, it comes he to does. audio videos. Yes, he does. You know? Too bad he's not good doing them. I mean, he's good making them, but just in front of the camera, stay away, Chris. Just stay away. Oh, man. All right. So <laughs> coming up next. The Knickerbockers at the Garden, losers of three straight, coming off a loss tonight against Miami. And don't you agree that this just sets up the table? This this first game, I, I don't want to put too much emphasis normally on a first game of a trip, but you and I have talked about this in the past. Yeah. And it's th this one, it though, wow. Because you got Oklahoma City on the back end and you got Boston on a back-to-back. And you're just trying somehow to figure out how to go two and two in this trip. I don't see you going two and two in this trip if you lose to the Knicks. Well, I think Mike Brown would be silly if he's like, hey, guys, we're going to go four and oh. It's like pick and choose your spots. Obviously, you're yeah. going to play to be competitive and win, but you know what you're walking into. So I have a question for you. You're a New Yorker. What was it like when the Kings came to town? Was it like, oh, we can't give away the tickets? No, it depends. Yeah. When the when the Kings were really good, it was the toughest ticket of the year. Well, yeah, uh, I bet. Like, you know, two. They were. And, Every, and, yeah. when, when the Kings came to town when they were good in the early 2000s, they were all over the tabloids, all over the talk shows, and it was a huge, huge deal, particularly more against the Nets than the Knicks because the Nets were really good back then. Yeah. And a lot of the writers and, a lot, you know, and the tabloids, the scribes, thought that we were looking at an NBA Finals preview, and we almost were. Should have. Uh, but – Here's the deal. The, the the East Coast bias, when you are a team like Sacramento, you make or break how people perceive you very often in a year based on how you play at Madison Square Garden because people believe what they read and the tabloids will give you credit if you go in there and play well. And conversely, they'll call you clowns and stuff if you right. get blown out. Right. So that was always a very good question. That was always a very important game for, you know, we always talk about, gee, the Kings don't get any respect. The Kings don't get any credit. Gee, they, yeah. they don't get talked about on TV. Well, if you went in and beat the Knicks real badly, 
it kind of put you on the map more. It, it was a very big game. Very interesting. A big game for the Kings, whether they were good or not, because it's an opportunity to get on the map. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the Kings the last two years, Grant, I don't watch Sports Center much, but when I've watched, it's like the late highlights or to the end, even though they were a good team. So, East but, Coast, East Coast. Yep. Yeah. I would just say this about the Knicks game. It is going to be one of those games that when you look back at these now seven games remaining, you might go, gee, you know what? That game at Madison Square Garden is to why the Kings are the sixth seed. And if they lose that game, you might be saying, you know what? They lost that tight game in New York. Boy, that, because that just sets up, again, that that sets up this road trip, Ryan. It sets up this road trip. It really does. Yeah, and it also sets up for a two and a half, three hour discussion if you include a lot of Kings fans in it, because then the discussion turns to, well, that game shouldn't be that important. You should have won. The, you know what I mean? But yes, this game absolutely is the tone right. setter. Go uh, one, 109 to 95. The Kings get a huge W and the beam is lit in Sacktown tonight. Boom! Have a great night and Jimoli Jimba Bowl. Do we want to get to Zach here or no? Oh, do we got Zach? Yeah, absolutely. All right, bring him on. Zach, what are you doing tonight? Light the beam. Thank you for waiting. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, first of all, Rocky, that was perfect with the teddy bear if you're still listening. <laughs> that was funny. Um, anyways, Ryan, that whole comment that you made about well, obviously we don't know for sure. Yeah, is, is there some sort of disconnect, you know, with between Brown and Fox? Because if that's it, then that's that's probably not good moving forward. Hey, it, it, look, I am not reporting that it has not been substantiated. I I am speculating based off of the information that we all have in front of us. I am not going off of anything that's sourced or anything of that nature. But it's just how I feel. And if you look at it, I mean, the puzzle pieces kind of fit, right, Zach? Um, I mean, I will, I'll take your word for it, definitely. I mean, I haven't, like, looked at, like, it that closely. I mean, maybe you're watching uh, certain, like, body language between him and coach whenever they go to, like, commercial or whatever. Right no, before. I'm not. That's, oh, the, okay. that's, like, the last thing I'm looking at. I, I'm looking at things more like the sets that they're running. I'm looking at the comments that they're making about the offense. It's those things that just yep. the, what this team is supposed to be good at, how they go directly against some of the things, you know, De'Aaron is either doing or not doing. That's, I mean, should, that's the disconnect. Should Fox really be playing off the ball? Because I don't know if I like it because he's pretty much a pure point guard. He's not like a combo guard, really. He's not like a CJ McCollum. I'm just throwing that, for example. Should he be playing off the ball? I just um, I don't know if I really like it. I, I, don't well, I, I mean, I can give you my opinion. I can tell you De'Aaron Fox got to the NBA playing with the ball. So my guess would be you probably want to keep it in his hands. But if the coaches have seen something different in practice than we don't see, which is why they're putting him off ball, then I defer to them, obviously. Because what's interesting is if you go back to the very beginning of the season, and you remember that the Lakers or the Kings played the Lakers. I think it was like game three of the season. That's a game when Fox injured his ankle. Mm -hmm. If you re if you were to go watch back, rewatch that game, you would look, watch Fox. He literally played almost identically to how he played in the playoffs before he broke his finger. Mm. And since then, like, you know, up until like the last six, seven weeks, he was pretty solid. But then obviously in his last six, seven weeks, just very like up and down but i mean i don't know like if it's injury or like what you said but it, there's we just need some sort of reporting from the media which was yeah no i i i have so i've maintained for a long time and grant i have a question for you after this i've maintained for a long time that after the season i really look forward to what's going to come out but grant you said De'Aaron fox has not been consistent enough this season are fans, are we looking too much at the times he's been great in putting that on a pedestal and dismissing the times that he's not been as consistent? Because what Zach just said was, I remember six, seven weeks where he hasn't been playing well, but before that he played really well. And that only week he's talking about is right after the All-Star break. There have been more than one 
sequence of the year where I didn't think he was playing well. All right. I, I didn't in, in January, I thought he was extremely lethargic during those three weeks when he blew up the media. Body language not good. We got a lot of complaints on our shows. Gee, what's wrong with Fox? What's wrong with yeah. Fox? What's wrong with Fox? And I thought that when he was not named to the All-Star team, um, he played very well leading up to the All-Star break and right after the break. I think he's regressed a little bit. And I guess for me, I expect more from him because I've seen it. And I think if you want to get to where Shea Gilgos Alexander and, and Brunson is in the East and these other you know, elite point guards, you can't have lulls in your game because it's like a NFL quarterback having lulls. It's the most important position on the floor. And the Kings feel like they've got one of the best in the league. And I felt like going into the season, they did too, based on how I saw him play last year, particularly in the second half of the season and in the playoffs against a generational talent like Steph Curry. I thought Fox was the best player on the floor until he broke his finger. I thought he was the best player on the floor. And I'm saying, wow, the Kings finally have a superstar at a guard position. And I haven't seen that this year other than spurts. And so it makes me wonder, just like you, is there a disconnect with the coach? Uh, is there something going on off the court that's affecting him on the court? You don't think Does he have an injury that he's not really, you know, talking much about that's affecting his play? So the, all of these things have popped into my mind. Sure. You don't think it's like conditioning because I wouldn't think that conditioning. No, you can't have no. you can't play the way he plays and have a conditioning problem. It's impossible. No, no I, mean, it, I agree with that. I was just I mean, that was like just going out there. Guys, I would just pose this question to you. Look, Darren Fox, the bottom line is he's an isolation point guard. If you have to put him into a category, whether he's yeah. a distributor and get his guys involved and he's also a scorer or if he's an isolation guy he's with the hardens he's with those guys and quite frankly isolation basketball does not go anything with what the kings are trying to run now so i guess that's where i come back to zach that's just an element in where yep. i say something is disconnected it's got to get connected here uh you know, down the stretch, that's for sure. He, hey, you, know, he, you, you got some huge games coming up that, let's face it, I think the Kings are going to be underdogs in three of these four road games. Definitely. And the thing is, that, like, if they finish as a sixth seed, that gives them, like, six, seven days of rest before the yes. playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good point. Good critical. point. Yep. That's huge. a great Thanks, point. Thanks, Zach. We haven't said that. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, that's another thing about being a, a, a six seed. You get that extra rest Wonderful and that, boy, point. oh boy, uh, that would be huge. Hey, I want to tell you about Gold Country uh, Veterinarian Hospital, Auburn, also serving the foothills, of course, Roseville and the greater uh, Sacramento area. Full service veterinary medicine, dentistry, surgery and wellness care. They are dedicated to urgent care. Bottom line, when your pet needs to be seen, they are available. They have advanced internal medicine, full surgical care. They have the most modern technology, and they're very proud of their pain management protocols. So when your pet needs a vet, Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital will be there for you. They are awesome. That's Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. Well, a uh, really big win for the Sacramento Huge. Kings. And now it's a long flight to uh, New York and take on the next Thursday. Any final thoughts? Uh, you know what? Good night for the Kings. The positives outweighed the negatives. Don't look too much into the De'Aaron Fox comments, but I stand by those. And I, I don't mind being one of the only people in town saying there is a disconnect, in my opinion. I don't necessarily disagree with you. I think you make some very good points. And there's something going on. That's for sure. You can't just ignore it. There is something. That's for sure. Don't forget, tomorrow, right here on If You Don't Like That, Jerry Reynolds yes. at 4 o'clock. That's tomorrow. Kings win. They beat the Clippers. Seven games left right on the heels of the Mavericks, the Pelicans. We're going down to the wire here in Sacramento.